This tutorial is all about the structure of the atom and how to draw atoms of the first 20 elements in the periodic table. This tutorial is at foundation level, so here are the objectives from the specification for the first part of what I'm going to go through. It would be useful while I'm going through this to have a periodic table handy. This one's taken from the specification which you can get off the OCR website. It's the OCR Gateway B um, additional science specification. The periodic table has the known elements and an element is a substance which can't be broken down into anything simpler and every atom of an element is identical but of course it's different to the atoms of all other elements. So each element has its own particular atom. And in theory at least, the atom is the smallest component of any element which would have the same chemical properties as that element. So if you were to burn a piece of magnesium, it would burn with a white flame. And in theory, if you were to burn one atom of magnesium, it would burn uh, with oxygen to make a tiny, tiny flame. And that's the principle behind it. When you look up the word atom on Google Images, you get all sorts of weird and wonderful pictures, uh, of which these are some of them, but they seem to have certain things in common. For example, they have a central nucleus made out of small particles, and they have other electrons uh, whizzing around the outside in various ways. Here's a typical picture, with the nucleus being made up of even smaller pieces, and with the electrons uh, in various kinds of orbits around the outside. You need to know that the atom has got a central positive nucleus and that nucleus is made up of two subatomic particles called protons and neutrons. There's a third subatomic particle called the electron and the nucleus is surrounded by negative electrons. You need to know the contents of this table. It gives the relative charges and the relative masses of the three subatomic particles. First of all the proton. The proton is plus. It's positive. That's all the P's together. The neutron is no charge, it's got none, it's nil, it's neutral, that's all the N's together. The electron, well whichever way you write the letter E, like this or like this, it's got a negative charge in it. Then we go on to the relative mass, well these again are relatively easy to remember. You need to remember that the protons and neutrons are both found in the nucleus and they are the um, subatomic particles with mass, which are the heavy ones. They weigh the equivalent of one unit each, whereas the electron weighs practically nothing. It weighs about one two thousandth the, the mass of the proton and the neutron, or 0 0.0005 units in comparison. Let's start drawing atoms, and the simplest atom in the periodic table, the smallest, is hydrogen, which contains one proton, no neutrons at all, and one electron. Now the proton is found in the nucleus, which I've represented here by the blue circle, and the electron is in an orbit around the outside of that nucleus. That orbit is called a shell. Helium is the second largest, and helium has got two protons, two neutrons and two electrons. The two protons and two neutrons are found in the nucleus here, and the two electrons share the same shell around the outside. This shell is quite small and can take only two electrons. So when we come to lithium with three protons, four neutrons and three electrons, the three protons and four neutrons go in the central nucleus, clustered together. But the three electrons can't all fit on that first shell. The first shell is full with two electrons. And so two of them are parked here, but the third one has to take an additional second shell, which is uh, larger than the first shell. Here's a past paper question. Look at the diagram. It shows a fluorine atom. Write down the name of part A. Well, part A is pointing towards the nucleus. And look at the table, it shows some information about the particles which make up atoms. That's why it's important to learn this table. Well, the proton has got a positive charge. And the relative mass of a neutron is in the nucleus. is the same as a proton, which is 1. And there's the answers as expected. Positive or plus or plus VE, which is a shortened version for positive, which examiners don't mind at all or plus one. 
I like to use this analogy to explain what happens when electrons are added to the atom. It's like the executive car park model, and reception is like the nucleus. Well, if you were going to park in this car park in the morning, and you were the first there, you would park in a space next to reception, because it's nice and close. You wouldn't park up on the third level. And as cars uh, arrived, they would find the simplest places to park, and no one would park on the third level until the previous two levels were full. Well, electrons are like this. They like to find the lowest energy level. And so, atoms fill up from the inner shell outwards. And the next shell doesn't start to fill until the previous one is completely filled. The first shell of an atom can take up to two electrons. So far as you're concerned, any other shell can take up to eight. Continuing the drawings, beryllium, which is our fourth smallest element, or Be, has got four protons, five neutrons, and four electrons. Again, the protons and neutrons go into the central nucleus. It's got four electrons, two go in the first shell, and two go in the second shell. Here's boron with five protons, six neutrons, and five electrons. The five protons and six neutrons go in the nucleus, and the five electrons go two in the first shell and three in the second. But how do I know how many protons and electrons it's got? Well, I look up the periodic table, and boron has got an atomic number of five. That means it's got five protons, because each element has got a different atomic number, it's got a different number of protons. Now, if it's got five protons, protons have got a positive charge, and overall, the atom is neutral. That means it must have the same number of negative charges. Electrons have got a negative charge, so the number of protons and the number of electrons must be the same. If it's got five protons, it's got five electrons. But how about the number of neutrons? Well, there's a second number associated with each element, and this number is called the mass number. The mass number is the number of protons and neutrons because these are the only ones which really have any mass. There's no point counting the number of electrons in the mass because the electrons weigh next to nothing. So when we work out the mass of an atom, we add up only those particles which are the heavy ones in the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. So the mass number is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. If we know the atomic number and we know the mass number, we should be able to work out how many protons electrons and neutrons an atom has. Let's assume then that we know these two numbers in green and blue on this slide here, the proton number and the mass number. The proton number or atomic number is the number of protons, so we know the number of protons. But because all atoms are neutral, the number of electrons is the same as the number of protons, so we now know the number of electrons. We know that the mass number is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. But of course, we already know the number of protons, that's the proton number or atomic number. So the number of neutrons is the mass number take away the proton number or atomic number. Again, it's worth learning these equations because they will help you in your exam questions. Here's another exam question. This question is about atomic structure. Look at the diagram, it shows the electronic structure of an atom. Atoms contain electrons, and look, the crosses are labelled as electrons. How many electrons are there in this atom? Well, simply a case of counting. There's two on the first shell, then eight, that makes ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Therefore, there are fourteen electrons in this atom. What's the electrical charge on an electron? Well, an electron is negative. The nucleus contains two types of particles. Which ones are these? Well, these are the protons and the neutrons. And what's the electrical charge on the nucleus? Well, if it contains particles with a positive charge and particles with no charge, then overall the nucleus must have a positive charge. And there's our answers from the mark scheme. The final part on this tutorial is just a fact you need to know. And you need to know that atoms have got a very small mass and a very small size, but you don't need to know anything more than that.